Thank you, everyone. Uh, so we started with a video, and I want to show that video because um, it really does a better job of explaining what the hell this whole Raspberry Pi thing is about than me just talking to you. Um, so what we, we, myself and Jad, we, we work for the UN. We work for UNICEF and UNHCR, and we try and innovate within probably one of the most difficult structures that you can imagine. Um, we were going to talk to you a little bit about some techniques that we use and a little about that some projects that we're doing. So the first up is this is the all-in-one Raspberry Pi based computer. It costs about a hundred dollars um, and then a bit more when you start adding the keyboard and mouse and everything. Uh, this came about because I, I wanted to I, I saw, I'm from the startup world myself, I joined UNICEF a year ago, and I, I knew what was out there. I knew what was happening around the world in Singularity and si Silicon Valley and all around the world, and I, I wanted to bring some of this, this, these new ideas and this commodity hardware to a place like Lebanon where we could reuse it for things like e-learning. So I, I started with that mission um, in, uh, in February, and now today I, we managed to get our pilot off the ground, and we're, we're starting to to actually see what this kind of thinking and this kind of application of technology can do. So um, yeah, I'm really happy to share that with you guys today. Um, this is like just one project that we're working on. Um, we, we try and employ a very lean startup methodology, as Munir said. I really like that talk, by the way. You've stolen a lot of my points, but that's cool. Um, um, and you know, we, we're trying to do it in a very difficult environment, uh, both with the Syrian crisis and with the organizations that we work for. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand the, the clicker over to Jad, who's going to give you a little bit about the context of the, of the, of the situation we're operating in. Hi, uh, I'm Jad, Information Management Officer and also Innovation Lead uh, for UNHCR in Lebanon. I'm going to start by uh, showing you the challenge we are facing by showing a timeline of uh, the arrival, the rate of arrival of Syrian refugees here in the country. In June 2011, uh, we started with just 2,000 uh, refugees coming in from, from the north to the Akkar region. And I'm just going to click through quickly. By December 2011, we had 5,000, 25,000 by June 2012. You can see we set up three offices by that time. And then by 175 by December, Half a million in June 2013, 858,000 by end 2013, and then today we have almost 1.2 million registered refugees in the country. You can see uh, refugees are in every village in the country. It's a big challenge. One more thing, slide I want to show you. This is the same map, and inside you'll see yellow dots. Those yellow dots are the camps, the informal settlements in the country. And those are the only visible refugees that you see. So, and they form only these yellow parts are only 16 to 17 percent of all the refugees in the country. And those are the ones that you can go and you can see this camp and try to assist them. All the rest are living within urban areas, within buildings, within, with, with, the, with the Lebanese population. So how we, can we get more information? It's not, it's not that difficult. Also, we have a lot of refugees. There's a lot of NGOs. We have, we're, we're coordinating with over 100 international and local NGOs here in the country. And every single one of them, including UN, UNICEF, every single, PU, all agencies are collecting a lot of information. So working with the information management unit, we wanted to, uh, we work together with UNICEF, with all, with all other agencies. So we wanted to, okay, we have all of this information. We cannot have one system for everyone. How can we make use of every single information in a simple way? So that's the new project that I'm working on with James. Uh, it's called the sponge base. It's still at its early stages. What is, what is this project? It's, uh, it's basically, uh, we, have, we have all of this information. How can we link it together? The only way to link information that is not similar is on a geographical area. They have, something happens somewhere. So that was our basis to start. Okay, each information looks different than the other. How can we, how can we put it together? So okay, geography, we understand. So we thought we had a very simple model. Where, 
what is the information in plain text, and if there's a value uh, associated to it, we'll put it together. And then we throw it all on an interactive map. So that's the idea of SpongeBase. Uh, it's another project that, uh, that we really hope it's going to be kind of a breakthrough in how we collect information, how we, how we collate information together. Because now information is in Excel files, in databases. All of it will bring it together in an automated way. So let's see how it, we might fail. <laughs> you, will, you will see, but James can explain to you how, how at the process that we, we're going through in developing such a new innovative solution for collating information. So I just want to run through um, a few things. Myself and Jad, when we were preparing this talk, we sat down like, okay, what do we, what do we actually do? Like, what are the techniques that we've used to, to get some of these things off the ground? And I just put a few of them in some slides, and I'm just going to kind of explain what, what I'm trying to say. So um, first one, I mean, a lot of people talk about innovation now. There's innovation courses. There's innovation... You can go and do a course of innovation at a university, and then you're an innovator, you know, and you're going to go out and you're going to change every organization and business just like that. Um, I would not say innovation is not a thing. It's not, it's not like a thing you can throw out a problem and it will solve it. Innovators are people sitting in this room. They're people who change something in a process in a very small way that leads to a bigger impact or, or p p introduces a new tool or a technology into an organization that, that creates a, a, a bigger change or a smaller change to begin with that, that equates to a bigger change over time. And that, that really is what innovation means to me. It, it's doing the, the small things, the slight changes, convincing that one manager to, hey, why don't we just try this, this way of doing something and, and, and then measure that and, then, and see what happens. And um, as we said, it's okay to fail. And if you, can, you have to fail in a small way, but it's okay to fail. So. Innovate by making, making those small changes. Figure out, okay, this is the big problem I have. What are, what, let's scale that back a bit. Let's not do the five-year plan. Let's do the month plan or the three-month plan. Let's figure out, okay, if I, if I do this project or I'm going to do this for this month, and then I'm going to evaluate what, what happened. Like, was there any improvement? Do I need to change this? So we just bin that and do something else. And a few of those iterations lead to the bigger overall change. And that everything that we've done in the last year has, has been following uh, cycles like this. Uh, take, yeah, take one problem at a time. <laughs> Don't try, and me and Jad are not very good at that sometimes. We try and do everything at once, but try and take one issue at a time so you can, you can really, really, really dedicate yourself to that. Uh, try and uh, do the, the iterative cycle, do the agile technology methodology to, to, to get that moving, and then once, once you've, uh, you've got that to a good point, uh, you may want to jump to another problem, and sometimes these problems are interlinked, especially when we talk about mapping. Um, it, you, you can see a lot of problems around it, and the solving them all together at once, you're not going to get very far. So it's maybe start with the data collection, then do the aggregation, then do the visualization, that kind of cycle. We can learn a lot from the private sector. Well, I, I would, when I joined UNICEF, I would say that we're maybe five years behind some of the, the, the technologies and techniques that, that startup companies and, and even big businesses who, who have people that come in and just, and just force these changes to happen are, are doing. We, we're, we, we're behind. As a humanitarian, um, or a humanitarian community, we're, we're behind some of the things that the private sector is doing. But that's okay. We have people in Silicon Valley that are coming up with great ideas. They're not on the ground, though, and that, I think, is really important. You need, you need those people coming up with the big ideas and inventing new, new technology, but you also need the people on the ground like you guys who are like, you know, I'm a child protection officer sitting in UNICEF. What, I have this problem. Like, who do I go to? Like, first, talk to people in your organization. First, that's the first call. Like, uh, is there an innovation person? Is there a, a, an IM? Is there a technologist somewhere? Hey, I have this issue. Um, do you have any ideas? Do you know of anything out, outside of our organization that we can leverage to, um, to create some change? Work with your partners and colleagues. Like I, I, it's really important that, and I think in Lebanon, what I've seen anyway is one of the good examples of where you have a, a, over 100 NGOs and UN agencies, and we're all working together um, to achieve better results for children and for refugees. And that, that has been key. I mean, uh, 
I, wouldn't, I, I would just be one man doing this if I didn't have people like Jad who are also trying to do the same things. And by working together and sharing resources and trying to work to common goals instead of every, each, each organization doing their own very similar thing has, has meant that we can really come together and, and, and deliver these things as one and, and also farm out some of that workload. It, it, it's impossible for one organization to crack these problems sometimes. And I, I think that's it from us. Thank you very much for listening to us.